Hi everyone, welcome to my yoga class. My name is Sarah Highfield. Um, I operate under Yoga Jazz Yoga and this morning or maybe afternoon wherever you are, I will be teaching a relaxing but refreshing and revitalizing class. So I hope you're all ready. Um, before we start, you may want to grab some props. So I have a block. If you don't have a block, a large book will do. I also have a strap. If you don't have a strap there, a belt will also substitute. And my favorite prop is this little pad, which you can get in Decathlon. These go under your knees, so when you do kneeling poses, and they are so soft and comfortable, and they also provide a lot of support. But if you don't have one of these, you can use a folded up blanket or even a cushion. So I'll give you just a moment to grab anything that you might need to get now before we start. So let's get started. Come to your mat, sit comfortably, and close your eyes. Bring your attention into your body, pressing down through the sit bones and lengthening your spine. Soften the shoulders and take three deep breaths. Inhale through your nose. Exhale out of your mouth with a sigh. Two more times. Inhale. Exhale. And one more time. Deep inhalation. Exhale. Slowly open your eyes. Place your left hand on the floor alongside you and stretch your right arm across. Rotate the chest up towards the ceiling and then stretch the top arm across a little bit more. Breathe deeply here. Feel a deep stretch through the side of the body and then inhale up to center Exhale, swap sides. Again, rotate the chest up towards the ceiling and stretch the top arm across to the side wall. And inhale back to center. Now, place your right hand on your left knee and twist to the back of your room, keeping the spine long and the shoulders down. Stay like this and breathe deeply. Inhale to come back to center and exhale, swap sides. Keeping the spine long, look over the back shoulder. And inhale back to center. Now, stay sitting cross-legged, move the fleshy parts from under your bum. Inhale, lengthen through the front of your body. As you exhale, hinge forward at the hips, walk the hands out. Now, some of you who are more flexible will find that you can come all the way down. So maybe bring the forehead down to the floor. But if that's a little bit too much for you, just keep the hands out in front of you. Now, no matter how far forward you're folding, make sure you're pressing down through the sit bones and lengthening the spine. Keep the shoulders down and away from your ears. And then stay low, walk your hands to your left and press down through your right sit bone. So you get a stretch in the lower right torso. 
Continue to keep the spine long and the chest lifted. Now, walk your hands over to the right and press down through your left sit bone. Keep the spine long. And walk your hands back into the center and inhale, push yourself back up. Swap the cross of your legs. Move the fleshy parts from under your bum. Inhale, lengthen through the front of your body. And exhale, walk your hands out. So you may notice that this is either easier or harder on this side. So everybody finds one side of the body a little bit more flexible than the other side. Usually it's to do with um, the tightness in your muscles. So most people, for example, who are right-handed will find that the right-hand side of their body is um, tighter and less flexible. So just notice how you're feeling now. Notice how you feel compared to when you did this pose on the first side. What you want to try and create eventually through yoga is a balance in the body and a balance with the flexibility on both sides of the body. Stay low, walk your hands to the left, press down through the right sit bone. Again, long spine, push forward with the chest. This will help to keep the spine straight. And walk your hands over to your right, press down through the left sit bone. Bring the hands back into the center. Inhale, push yourself up and walk the hands in. Now, come to your knees. I'm gonna demonstrate this sideways so you can see what I'm doing. So from kneeling, we're going to stretch the forearms, the front of the forearms and the backs of the forearms. So place your palms flat on the floor with the fingers pointed towards you. And then sit your bum back down towards the heels. You should feel a stretch here. Now, if you don't feel the stretch, you can always walk the hands out and then sit back. So play around with this and see where you feel the stretch. So find your edge, but where there's no pain. This is still the warm up. Stay like this, breathing deeply. And then you can relax and we'll stretch the back of the forearm. So create a fist with your hand, create a tight fist. The back of the hand, so this part of the hand, is gonna come onto the mat. So do it with both hands, and then bring the backs of the hands onto the mat. Keep the fist tight. What's gonna happen is naturally, when you start to do this, your hands are gonna sort of unravel. So keep the fist tight, and then see if you can straighten your arms. You should feel the stretch here. Take a couple more breaths like this. And relax. Let's do some shoulder rolls. So shoulder rolls backwards. When you're doing this, really try to create big circles with the shoulders. So really exaggerate the movements. Chest comes all the way forward and then it sinks back. So. Big shoulder rolls backwards. And then forwards. And you can relax. Let's turn our head side to side. Feel the stretch through the side of the neck. 
as you go from side to side. And up and down. Now, do semicircles along the bottom. So, half circles along the bottom. So, don't do a full circle with the head. So, this gets a really nice stretch through the back of the neck. Now, do semicircles along the top. Stretch out the throat. sideways so you can see what I'm doing. Extend your right leg out to the side, sit the bum back on the heel. If you like, come down onto your forearms. Stay like this and breathe. If you can, try to have the foot flat on the floor so you get a deep stretch through the leg and under the leg. Try to relax here if you can. And then swap sides. So either resting on the forearms or if you're a little bit tighter, you can stay up like this. You should still feel a good stretch. Couple more breaths. And bring the leg back in. I'll turn sideways now so you can see what I'm doing. We'll come into child's pose. So take your knees wide, keep your feet together. Sit the bum back on the heels and then slide your hands forward, rest your forehead down. Stay like this and breathe deeply. Once you're comfortable, inch the fingers forward. Feel the stretch under the arms and along the sides of the torso. Try to relax into this pose and breathe deeply in and out of the nose. From here, slowly push yourself up, tuck under your toes and lift the hips up into downward dog. Walk it out. So walking on the spot in your downward facing dog. Feel the stretch through the back of each leg. Make sure the hips stay high and make sure the spine is long. Try to relax the neck and relax the muscles in your face. Now, come to stillness. So press both heels down in your downward dog. Look at your feet and check that they're hip width distance apart and that the outer edges of the feet are parallel. Press the palms, sorry, press the heels down. Feel the stretch through the backs of the legs and keep lifting the hips up. Two more breaths like this. And then come down onto your knees. Okay, we're going to come into a low lunge pose. Now this is where you might want to use something under your knee. So again, 
This is a little pad that I got from Decathlon and it is perfect for all of the kneeling poses in yoga. I absolutely love it and um, so many of my students have these now. These are really cheap so you can buy two or you know as many as you need um, and they're so useful because what I do find, whilst you can use a cushion or a blanket um, to support your knee in kneeling poses, they can be a little bit um, wobbly or they're not, they don't mold to your knee in the same way that one of these does. So, we come into our low lunge pose. Have your left knee on the floor and your right leg forward. Sink the hips forward and down so you're here. Now, depending on how hard you want to work, you can either keep your hands on your front knee like this, or you can bring your hands to your heart center in prayer, or you can lift your arms up like this. So see what feels best for you. With the arms up, you're gonna get a deeper stretch through the front of the body, but even if you have your hands on your knee, you can focus on sinking the hips down without worrying about losing your balance. So do your low lunge, the hands on the knee, the hands on your heart center or arms up. Whatever works best for you. Every time you exhale, try to sink the hips down a little bit more. Feel the stretch through the front of the left hip. Take a couple more breaths here. And then inhale, bring your weight back into the center and we come into half splits. So straighten your front leg, flex your front foot. Bring your hands onto the floor either side of the front leg. Inhale to lengthen through the front of your body and exhale, see if you can fold a little deeper. If this is kind of easy for you, you can always take your left hand and hold on to the outer edge of the right foot. That will give you a little bit of a deeper stretch. As you do this, try to keep the spine long and try to breathe in and out of the nose. Couple more breaths. And then you can release and swap your legs over. So this time the left leg is forward, the right knee is on the floor. Sink the hips forward and down. Your hands are on the knee or at your heart center or arms up. Again, pick whichever variation works best for you today. One more thing I should say is in yoga, don't, don't be too focused on what you think you should be able to do in terms of flexibility and strength. Every day is different. so. Even for myself, some days I feel so flexible and other days I feel so tight. It's so important to listen to your body and really respect how it's feeling on a certain day, um, especially if you don't want to injure yourself. So, in this stretch, every time you exhale, see if you can sink the hips down a little lower. And you'll feel a deep stretch through the front of the right hip. Couple more breaths. And inhale, bring the weight back into the center, flex your front foot, straighten your front leg. Have your hands either side of the front leg, 
Inhale to lengthen your spine and exhale, fold forward. If you like, you can always take your right hand and hold on to the outer edge of the left foot. This will give you a deeper stretch. Stay like this and breathe deeply. Try to keep pushing forward with the chest to keep the spine straight. And take two more breaths here. And you can release. Now, you may need to turn sideways on your mat, because I certainly will. We're going to come into a gate pose variation. So you will still need your little knee pad, and you might want to use a block. Now, if you don't have a block, don't worry. In fact, if you don't have a knee pad, don't worry. You can do these poses without, but they just make the pose more comfortable and they give you more support. So, have your, your right knee down and your left leg out to the side. Place the block on the floor alongside you like this. And then place your right hand down Stretch your left hand across and open the chest up towards the ceiling. Feel a deep stretch through the left hand side of the body. If you can, rotate the chest up a little bit more. Try to keep the spine long. Take two more breaths here. And inhale to come up. Now we're going to gate pose. So that was a gate pose variation. This is actual gate pose. Keep your legs where they are. Bring your left hand down onto the left leg. Stretch your right arm up and slightly across to the side wall. And then rotate the chest up. Stay like this. Feel the stretch through the side of the body. And take two more breaths. Inhale to come back to center. And then exhale, release, swap sides. So this time the left knee will be down. Extend your right leg out and place the block alongside you like this. Place your left hand down. Stretch the right arm across and then open the chest up. Keep actively reaching the top fingers towards the side wall. This will deepen the stretch through the side of the body. Continue to rotate the chest up towards the ceiling. Couple more breaths here. And then Inhale to come back up. Keep your legs where they are. Bring your right hand down onto the right leg. Stretch your left arm across and then open the chest up. Two more deep breaths here. And then inhale, back up to center, and exhale, relax. Now we'll come down onto the floor for a forward fold, also known as Paschimottanasana. You have options here. If your 
not so flexible, you can always sit on your block or your book or even your blanket or anything that's going to lift your hips up. So that will help you fall forward. If you're quite flexible and you want to challenge yourself a little bit more, maybe put your feet on the block like this. Or if you just want to do it normally, <laughs> you can have your feet on the floor. So again, do what works best for you. Uh, move the fleshy parts from under your bum. Now, you might need to use a strap here. If you can't reach your feet comfortably with straight legs, I would recommend using a strap. You simply place it around the bottom of your feet. If you're quite comfortable with a forward fold, then you can hold on to the big toes with the first two fingers of each hand. From here, inhale, lengthen the spine, and exhale, fold forward. Now, when you do this, if your arms start to bend, they bend to the outer edges of the room, so they don't tuck down here, they stay out like this so that the upper back and shoulder area is broad. At the same time, make sure that your feet are actively flexed and then pull the outer edges of the feet back. Now I'm going to do it with my hands just to show you, but you can do this without your hands. But pull them back, the outer edges of the feet. This is because what often happens in this pose is people hold on to their toes and then the outer edges of the feet start doing this and you don't want to do that. You want the feet to be completely flat and open. So pull the outer edges of the feet back, press the backs of the knees down towards the floor. As you're breathing, every time you inhale, the body lengthens. Every time you exhale, fold deeper. Try to fold at the hips and push forward with the chest. Take two more breaths here. And then inhale to lengthen the spine. Exhale, release. Give your legs a little shake. And we'll come into Parvottanasana variation. So cross your legs and place your hands 20 to 25 centimeters behind you with the fingers pointed forwards. Look back at your hands to check that they're level. And then inhale, press through the hands, push the chest up, drop the head back. If you don't like the head back, you can do this with the head forward. What's important here is that you're pushing down through the hands, pushing the chest up. You should feel the stretch through the front of the arms and the front of the chest. And if your head is back, you'll feel the stretch through the front of the throat. Take two more breaths here. And then inhale to come back up. Exhale, release. Give your arms a little shake if they need, if they need one. And now we'll come into uh, hero pose with eagle arms. So we're mixing two poses together. Um, for hero pose, I always demonstrate this first because hero, hero pose is a, a kneeling pose, but it's not for everyone because if you have sensitive knees, you won't be able to do this pose. And even for some people, it, it's uh, painful in the ankles. So let me demonstrate first. I'll demonstrate facing forward and then sideways so you can see what's going on. For your hero pose, you can start by kneeling just normally like this. And then put your feet just on the outside of your bum. That means your bum can come down onto the floor like this. So my feet are on the out edges of my bum and my bum is on the floor. From the side it looks like this. So the 
thumb comes down. You have an option. If you struggle with this, you can always place a block under the bum. Okay? Now that will lift you up a little bit more. It makes it much easier. What you'll find is, if you're struggling with the pose, when you're down here, uh, some people will start to round the back a little bit. Okay? So you may need to place a block under your bum. Now if you struggle with this pose completely and it's really not for you, just stay kneeling. Okay? Kneeling like this. That's fine. And even, believe it or not, some people do struggle with kneeling. Um, I've actually had students who can't kneel and they have tended to be a little bit older but it's because kneeling actually stretches the front of the ankle. So for some people that can be kind of painful. So if you're really struggling, just sit cross-legged. Anyway, we're doing eagle arms. So in your kneeling or your hero pose, whichever variation you're doing or cross-legged, bring your right arm over your left Bend at the elbows and then bring the palms together. Shoulders down, press the elbows up. Okay? Stay like this and breathe deeply. Feel the shoulder blades moving apart and down the back. And see if you can lift the elbows up a little higher. So this is normally a standing pose. Those of you who do a lot of yoga will know that this is Garudasana. It's a standing uh, balancing pose. So we're taking the balancing element out of this. Couple more breaths. And relax. Swap your arms over. So this time the left arm goes over the right, Bend at the elbows, shoulders down, press the elbows up. Feel the stretch through the backs of the shoulders. Keep breathing deeply in and out of your nose. Take two more breaths here. And relax. Unravel your legs wherever they are. Bring them back out. If you need to give them a little shake, then do so. And now we'll come into Janu Shasasana, also known as head to knee pose. Again, you have options. If you are tight through the hamstrings, sit on a block, the block under your bum. If you want to make it harder, you're going to place the block out in front of you. Put your right foot on the block. Left foot comes in onto the inner right thigh. If you don't have a block and you're just doing the pose normally, just extend the leg out in front of you on the floor. Move the fleshy parts from under your bum. This is a really important cue in yoga because when you do that, it helps you to fall forward even deeper. If you need a strap, place it around the bottom of the foot. Otherwise, hold on to the outer edges of the foot with both hands. Now, rotate the torso so that it's over the right thigh and then inhale, lengthen through the front of the body. Exhale, fold forward. Again, when the arms bend, they bend to the outer edges of the room. Every time you inhale, lengthen the spine. Every time you exhale, fold a little deeper, maintaining the length in your spine. As you're doing this, also check that your shoulders are level so you're not kind of like, like this, with one shoulder back a bit and one forward a bit more. Really try to keep them level. And take a couple more breaths. Inhale to lengthen here. Exhale, release. Swap sides. 
Extend the left leg out. Right foot comes onto the left inner thigh. Move the bum. And then either use your strap or place your hands onto the outer edges of the foot. Rotate the torso so that it's over the left thigh and then inhale to lengthen, exhale, fold forward. Stay like this. Make sure that the shoulders stay down and away from the ears so they're not bunching up. Try to keep the length in the spine and the neck. Remember to keep your foot actively flexed and the legs strongly engaged. Two more breaths. Slowly inhale to come up, exhale, release. Give the legs a quick shake. And now we'll come into a twist. So stay where you are, I'm going to turn sideways. Place your right leg under and your left leg over. So you're sitting like this, your feet can be sticking out the sides. Um, don't worry if the knees are kind of going forward and they're not going out to the sides, that is fine. And then place your left hand on the floor behind you. Bring the right arm across the top of the left thigh like this. Inhale to lengthen your spine. Exhale, twist. As you're twisting, use the arm against the thigh and the hand on the floor to help you. Try to get an even twist throughout the spine. Remember to keep the shoulders down and the neck long. Every time you inhale, grow taller. Every time you exhale, twist deeper. Take two more breaths here. And then inhale to come back to center. Exhale, quick counter twist. So this is an open twist. And inhale back to center. Swap your legs over. So left leg under, right leg over. Make sure you're comfortable. And then right hand comes down onto the floor behind you. Left arm comes across the top of the right thigh. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, twist. Keep the spine long. Keep extending up through the crown of the head. If you can, look over the back shoulder. And remember, every time you inhale, lengthen. Every time you exhale, twist a little more. Two more breaths. And inhale back to center. Exhale, quick counter twist. So again, it's an open twist. And inhale, back to center again. Unravel your legs and place the soles of the feet together. We're coming into Baddha Konasana. If you're tight in the hips, you can sit on the block. So put the block under the bum. That is your option here. Move the fleshy parts from under your bum. This is whether you're on the floor or the block. And then see if you can open your feet like a book. So the soles of the feet are pointing upward. Now, not everyone will be able to do this. Um, 
but if you can, have a go. From here, inhale to lengthen through the front of the body and exhale slowly fold forward. Now, if you need to, you can use the arms to press against the legs to give you a little extra push. This is Parakanasana, also known as Bound Angle Pose or Cobbler's Pose. So, a lot of the yoga poses have a Sanskrit name and an English name and sometimes two English names so and also sometimes two Sanskrit names so often you'll get the same pose with lots of different names but it's the same thing um, the more yoga you do the more you'll pick up on that and get used to all the different names so every time you inhale body lengthens every time you exhale see if you can fold a little more Try to keep the spine long here. Keep pushing forward with the chest. Couple more breaths. And then inhale to come back up. Exhale, stay where you are. Extend the legs out. So we come into Upavishta Kanasana, but we'll use uh, some variations. So legs are extended out either side of you like this. Move the bum. Again, if you're tight, if, if even sitting like this is kind of hard, I do recommend that you put the block under your bum. And uh, by lifting the hips up, it'll make the pose much more comfortable. Now, there are different variations here. Make sure your feet stay flexed and the legs stay strong and straight. If you're coming into the full pose, take the first two fingers of each hand and hold on to the big toes of each foot. If you can't quite do that, you're welcome to just walk the hands out in front of you like this. And you can stick the fingers down onto the floor and sort of pull yourself down. So do whatever works best for you. Uh, I'll actually demonstrate the modified version, but if you're holding onto your toes, hold onto them now. And then everybody, inhale, lengthen, exhale, fold forward. Come down as far as is comfortable. Now this pose, eventually the chest does come down onto the floor, but don't worry about doing that. Um, so long as you can feel the stretch, you're doing it right. Even if you're up here, just make sure you fold at the hips, spine is nice and long. At the same time, your feet should be flexed, the toes should be pointing up towards the ceiling. Legs are strong and straight. Stay like this and breathe. And as with many of the poses, on the inhalation, really feel the body lengthen and expand. On the exhalation, fall forward a little more. So let's take two more deep breaths. And slowly walk your hands back in. Bring the legs together and give them a little shake. Now we'll do some gentle back bends. So let's start lying on our front in baby cobra. So baby cobra is a nice, easy back bend, and it's a good one to start off with because it's very gentle. So on your front, have your hands at shoulder level on the floor. Keep the elbows tucked in. So you don't want the elbows going out like this. You want them in, nice and tight to the body. From here, keep your feet on the floor. If you need to engage the glutes, if you have a sensitive back, I would engage them now. For most people, this back bend is not really deep enough um, to need to do that. But if you think you need to, switch on the glutes. The feet are gonna stay down, and then we inhale, lift up the hands and the chest two to three inches off the floor. Stay like this in your baby cobra. 
So feel the micro bend in the lower back. The chest is lifting up. And you should feel the lower back working here. This is a nice back strengthener. Keep drawing the shoulders back and down. Keep breathing deeply. Take two more breaths like this. And relax the forehead down onto the back of the hands. Okay, next pose we're going to do is a Sphinx Pose variation. So Sphinx Pose is a little bit of a deeper back bend. The variation we're going to use, uh, we're going to do is with Frog Pose. So those of you who do Yin Yoga will know what Frog Pose is. Um, let me demonstrate. So take one leg, don't worry which leg, bring it out to the side like this. Looking at your leg, check that the knee is in line with the hip and the foot is in line with the knee. So you've got a nice right angle. And then prop yourself up on your forearms. So you're here. When you look down at your forearms, they should be shoulder width distance and parallel. This is the pose. This is a Sphinx pose uh, meshed with frog pose. So you get the hip opener and a nice stretch through the front of the body. So normally Sphinx pose is done with both legs behind you in a straight line and you lift the chest up, but we're doing it with the added hip opener. So stay here and breathe. Keep lifting the chest up and drawing the shoulders back and down. Now, unless you have really tight hips, this pose should feel quite good. It's not one of those poses which are um, really painful or so difficult to do. But again, I said, if you have tight hips, this won't be the nicest pose. Take a couple more breaths like this. And swap your legs over. So straighten that leg that's been up. Pull up the second side. Just check your leg is all in line. Nice right angles. And then lift the chest up. Draw the shoulders back. Stay like this. Really try to lengthen and extend through the spine as you do this. Feel the stretch in the front of the body. Two more deep breaths here. And relax, rest the forehead down on the back of the hands. <coughs> Excuse me. Take a couple of breaths like this. And then we're going to come into Cobra Pose. So <coughs> this is a much deeper back bend. If you're not comfortable with this, you can do just normal Sphinx pose, which looks like this. So it's kind of the pose we just did, but both legs are straight behind you. If you're comfortable with coming into a deeper pose, you'll come into Cobra pose. So start by having the chest down on the floor, hands are shoulder level, elbows tucked in. For this pose, definitely switch the glutes on. So tense the bum muscles. This will support your lower back. When you're ready, do this slowly. Inhale, push through the hands, lift the chest up off the floor. Nice and slowly. And then once you're up, check that you're comfortable. If you're comfortable, you can always bring the hands forward, 
ever so slightly so that you can straighten the arms. This will take some pressure out of the hands and make the pose more comfortable. Stay like this, breathing deeply, feeling the stretch through the front of the body. If at any point this is too much for you, you can simply come down onto the forearms like this. Okay? Obviously, try to stay up if you can. The shoulders draw back and down and the chest is lifted. Keep breathing deeply and take two more breaths. Exhale, very slowly, lower back down towards the floor. Take your time. You've been in a really deep back bend. Bring your forehead down onto the back of the hands. Couple of breaths here. Now, slowly push yourself up. Take your time because your back may be feeling a little bit sensitive. Just make your way up. And then come onto your back. We're coming into a twist. So we're going to use the twist as a counter pose for the back bend that you just did. Um, twisting is really nice. When you've been doing back bends or forward folds, twisting is like relief for the back. So. On the floor, on your back, shift your bum to the right, drop your knees to the left. Extend the arms out either side of you, and then if you can, turn your head away from the knees, looking out towards your right hand. Stay like this, make sure that the spine is long as you twist, and try to relax. The more you can relax here, the deeper you will stretch. Couple more breaths. Swap sides, bring the knees back up, shift your bum to the left, drop the knees down to the right, and then turn your head to your left. Remember that the spine should be long here, as with any twist. more breaths like this. And then bring the knees back up. Stay on your back. Lift your legs up in the air. You don't have to straighten them. Just lift them up like this. Then bring your arms back alongside the body. Circle your ankles. Maybe, if you like, you can lift your arms up and circle your wrists as well. This is a nice, gentle, legs up wall variation. Switch directions with the circles. And then we'll come into happy baby pose. So hold on to the outer edges of your feet like this. The knee should be wide, the feet should be wide. And then gently rock side to side. Feel the stretch in the hips. And uh, my tip is not to rock too hard or you will fall on your side. Massage the spine on the floor. And 
release. Now we'll come into Shavasana. So, lying on your back, if you have um, any back pain when you lie on your back like this, you can always place maybe a cushion under your knees or you could always just bend your legs and maybe have the knees uh, resting on each other so you can relax like that. So um, the most important thing here is that you're comfortable. Like even if you have to do Shavasana lying on your side, um, so long as you're comfortable, that's what's important. Ideally, do it on your back, but uh, don't worry too much. Uh, if you are on your back, hands are a little bit away from the body with the palms up. The feet can be sort of mat width distance. And then close your eyes and just let the whole body relax. Let the body feel heavy. And just let the breath flow in and out naturally now. So don't worry about affecting the breath or trying to control it. Just let it flow at its natural pace, at its natural depth. Let the whole body come to stillness. Notice how the energy within the body starts to slow down. And enjoy the feeling of doing absolutely nothing. With every exhalation, let the body feel heavier and heavier, sinking down into the mat. Keeping your eyes closed, start to bring your attention back into your body. And if you like, bring your hands into your stomach. We're going to take three deep breaths together. So take a big inhalation through your nose. Exhale out of your mouth with a sigh. Two more times. Inhale. Exhale. And one more time. Deep inhalation. Exhale. Keep the eyes closed. Stretch the arms up. Stretch the body long. And very slowly make your way up to seated. Take your time. Namaste and thank you for watching.